was just keeping. Yeah, God. So it's me and me up inside. You thought I was the night So you sacrifice my life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know.
of God this morning. I greet you in the matches and powerful name of Jesus the Christ who changes people, things, and situations. The same Christ who in John 1 and 1 was there in the beginning and who in Matthew 28, 20, he makes a promise, he makes a covenant to be with us even to the end of time. Amen. Amen. Judges chapter 13, starting at verse 24 through chapter 14, verse 9, was read responsibly. I want to lift up verse 6 of chapter 14. <coughs> chapter, verse 6 of chapter 14 says, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat. Though he had not nothing in his hand, but he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. Thus in the reading of God's word. I am in the process, for those of you who did not know, of becoming a pastor author. For I am in the process of writing a book on the spiritual meaning of manhood. And the months of June and July we dealt with chapters one through four. And now in chapter five we are ending, uh, finishing the book where we're looking at the strength of a man. Understand that Women, this applies to you as well. Amen. And so if I say men, just know I'm being all inclusive. Amen? Amen. And so I'm asking that you would pray for me and with me on a sermonic theme. I'm a classic man. I'm a classic man. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, we come to you in prayer on this, the second Sunday of the ninth month in the year. 2015. God, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you for all that you've done, for all that you're doing, for all that you have in store to do. But right now, God, in this preaching hour, we ask that you would decrease the preacher man, but increase your spirit inside of him so that your word may go forth and never come back void. For Lord, we are in a time where good is bad and bad is good, but we need the world to know that we are a classic man. In Jesus' name we pray. That all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. I'm a classic man. I am proud to say that I am a social media pastor. Amen. And I say that because I am able to stay abreast of everything of what's going on uh, with those that have allowed me into their social media world. And being a social media pastor, I am following one of my former students, and in following him on Twitter, he posted a tweet not too long ago stating that though he was not the first place winner, even with an injury, he was still one of the top three winners. Amen? And when focusing on the strength of a man, there are several types of strength one might have. There is physical strength, there is financial strength, there is physical, um, psychological strength, and then there is spiritual strength. And if the truth be told and confess, beloved of God, just about every man is going to lack in one or more of these types of strength. Just look forward if you're guilty. Amen. Which might explain why some people overcompensate in other areas. Amen. However, in the areas that he's strong, that area should not define his entire being. Especially if one of the lacking areas is his spiritual strength. Amen. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Because in our spiritual walk with Christ, in our relationship with God, there has been, there are, and there will be times when we need to be able and uh, be able and comfortable in saying no and really mean it. As a matter of fact, last week the preacher asked us, how strong is your nay-nay? Why? Because the Bible says 
Let your yea be yea and your nay be a nay. Based on what Salento pre presented to his authors, everybody needs to understand that Nay Nay is not a nickname. Nay Nay is not a TV character. Nay Nay is declining an offer that is put before us. Amen? Amen. This week, there is a young gentleman who is a Stanford University grad by the name of Jadina. J Jadina? Jadina. J okay. He is from Wisconsin. Amen. He's a college educated brother. And his name has become a household name because of his new hit entitled Classic Man. Nice rhythm, sounds good, has a catchy beat. But his definition of what a classic man is, is less than what God had in mind when the Celestial Council on Creation had the meeting. Amen. God says at that meeting, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds in the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. That's not his definition of a classic man. His thoughts of a classic man, here's what he says. He says, I'm a classic man. You can be mean if you look this clean. I'm a classic man. Calling on me like a young OG, I'm a classic man. You need, your, your needs get met by the streets. Elegant, old-fashioned man. Mm. That, 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 that's just the hook. He, he hadn't even gone into really what his definition of a classic man is. But in totality, what he's saying and promoting to his listeners is that it's all right to put a facade to present to the people what we desire them to perceive us as. But the real us is still in us. And it's not who they're going to really see. So therefore, what he's teaching, beloved, is how to be deceptive to get what you want. And the reality of his hit in comparison to some of all of us is that some of all of the adults can recall the days of being a classic man, of being a classic woman. Amen? Amen. According to his definition and his standards, and some might still be in that lifestyle. Amen? But I employ to everybody that the definition of a real classic man, a real classic woman, a real classic boy, a real classic girl is based on the standards that God has set before us. And part of the standards that God has set before us is what David writes in that first song that says, Blessed is a man, the woman, the boy, or the girl who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Yes. Nor stand in the path of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. That's the definition of a classic man. And it is in that understanding that we can tell somebody, I'm a classic man. I'm a classic woman. I'm a classic boy. I'm a classic girl. Let us engage the text. The book of Judges is said to, and believed to be one of the history books of the Bible. The author is unknown, but what the author does do is capture the historical, theological, and the spiritual parts of Israel's past. And what scholars and theologians suggest is part of the main body of what had happened is seeing the children of Israel fall in and out of relationship with God, which causes God to raise six individuals to assist with the deliverance of Israel. One of the six is a man by the name of Samson. And although Samson is not considered a judge, he does play a part in the deliverance of the Israelites. Stay with me. Because to appreciate the leadership of Samson is to understand that his life was planned out for him even before his father and mother could conceive. Because according to the narrator, his mother was 
unable to have children. I didn't say it. Go back to chapter 13, verse 2. It says she was barren and could not have children. But God, by chapter 13, verse 24, it tells us the woman bore a son and called him Samson. Here is the lesson. Don't ever count out God. Amen. Because God always got something in store for those that diligently seek him and believe that God is God. Hence I'm, hence I'm convinced, beloved of God, that when our aim is to be a classic man, there are at least four things we cannot do. Note takers, here we go. The first thing we cannot do is be afraid of it. Amen? The narrative says in verse 6, The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion apart as one would, would have torn apart a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand. So the it is the Spirit of God. Don't be afraid of the Spirit of God. It, it, it says that the lion, it says in verse 5, that the young lion came roaring against him. Can I put a pen right there and tell us that, tell somebody that bottom line is a lion is a lion, young or old. And regardless of the age, all of them got teeth. And at the right time, we look like the next meal. Can I help somebody else there? Watch this. We are never told anything about Samson. No age, no suicides, no stats of his physique, no church affiliation, no conversion story. But what we are told is that he was born and he grows up. To understand verse 6 is to understand the prophecy placed on Samson's life before Samson became a speck in his mother's belly. As a matter of fact, it should be no surprise what takes place in verse 6 because in verse 25 it tells us that the Spirit began to come upon Samson. And so because the hands of God was always on Samson, what takes place in verse 6 is no surprise or should be no surprise. Well, Pastor, what are you saying? Beloved of God, lean forward. Let me tell you this. I'm all, so all of us, all of us, were created in the image of God and according to his likeness. Some of all of us can accept that. Amen? But when talking about the Holy Spirit, some of all of us get a little nervous. We get a little spooked out. Because what we know is that we can't control that which created us. And so when it comes to talking about the Holy Spirit, we kind of look back up off of that. Because I, I don't want to get that deep. Can I help somebody understand? There is nothing to be afraid when it comes to the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit ain't going to do nothing to hurt us. Am I telling the truth, Mother May? As a matter of fact, it is an honor and a pleasure to have the Holy Spirit come upon us because that brings confirmation that our bodies are the residences of where the Holy Spirit is. But it also affirms what Kurt Franklin put to the word. He said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The wounded are made whole and there's rest for your soul. It is because of the liberty of the Holy Spirit that those that are open to letting him in, that we can tell our haters, I'm a classic man. But you can't be afraid of the spirit. Amen? That's the first thing. Second thing we cannot do is to be afraid to use it. Amen? Don't be afraid to use it. Again, not being aware of the roar of the young lion did not know if the roar was a precursor to an attack or just a scare tactic. Samson takes matters into his hands literally because the narrative tells us that the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat. Which 
reveals to some and remind others of the physical strength that Samson is reminded of. How many of us know that there's a piece of Samson in all of us? Amen. As a matter of fact, you don't believe me, you get scared. You get scared and watch how strong you get in the midst of fear. Amen. As a matter of fact, let me tell the bullets in here. The worst person you can fight is a scared person. Because they don't get some strength from you from, from only God that's going to bring you down. And so when I see you on Sunday morning, I see a, a eye that is a little darker than it should. I know what happened. Amen. But understand, this gruesome scene, there's two things to understand. Number one, lions are stronger than goats. Amen. But when young goats are killed, their hind legs are separated. Amen? And so he takes this young lion and he separates his hind legs as he would have a young goat. Watch this. In chapter 13, verse 5, Samson's mama is told that her son is going to help deliver the children of Israel. In chapter 13, verse 21, his mama gives birth to him, and he grows up. So in the in-between time, Samson being born and growing up, he discovers the beauty of females. Keep in mind, the text never tells us how old Samson is. Amen. But, but he discovers the beauty of females because during a strategic Trip, he sees a woman of Timna and desires to make her his wife. Uh, chapter 14, verse 3 reveals family hateration. Anybody deal with family hateration? Come on, somebody. In chapter 14, verse 13, he reveals family hateration because, but it also reveals self-determination because although his parents do not see, uh, do not approve his interracial relationship, Samson knows exactly who and what he walks. So he looks at the woman of Timna and says, the Lord is my shepherd. I see what I want. <laughs> so part of what he wants is part of God's strategy in delivering the children of Israel. Here's the twist. The narrative provides the effect of the cause in telling us in verse 5 that a young lion comes roaring against him. So in defense mode, he uses the spirit of the Lord to, um, to, take, um, to take control of that which is coming to attack him. Pastor, what is your point? But Lord of God, lean forward. Let me tell you to see your eyeballs. Uh, if we're in tune with our maker, if we're in tune with our creator, the same spirit that came to come upon Satan is the same spirit that will come upon us. You don't, you don't believe me? He, 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 here you go. Go to, go to chapter 11, verse 29. He says that, that, that there's a brother by the name of Jay. Huh? And Jay has some leadership skills huh? that in the midst of his leading the people in a military pursuit, huh? he goes against the Ammonites. Huh? All before there was a brother Jay. Huh? There was a brother by the name of Gideon. Huh? In that sixth chapter huh? and the 34th verse, huh? he delivers God's people huh? from the oppression of the Midianites. Huh? And before there was Gideon, uh, there was Ophidel. Uh, in that third chapter, uh, and the third and the tenth verse, uh, he is able to deliver the Israelites uh, out of the hands of another set of enemies. Uh, all I'm trying to tell somebody uh, is that when you got uh, the Spirit of the Lord uh, that dwells inside of you, uh, don't be afraid of it. Uh, don't be afraid to use it. Uh, because God will take uh, ordinary people uh, and do extraordinary things. afraid to use it. The third thing that we cannot do is brag about our deeds. Uh, come on somebody. You can't 
can't brag about your deeds. Reading the entire narrative will reveal part of Samson's reason for going to Timnah. And it's not only for his queen, but as a part of his strategy of fulfilling his duty for delivering the children of Israel. However, it is after the parent adoration that Samson gets to a vineyard and, and, and is approached by a young lion. I'm in verse 5, amen. That he attempts to intimidate Samson. What the lion doesn't know, like some of our haters, is who and whose Samson is. So the lion, like some of our haters, meets his match. And he loses his life. As a matter of fact, it tells us in verse 6 that the Spirit of the Lord comes mightily upon Samson. And he tears the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat, though he has nothing in his hands. Not enough of sleeve, no ever cadaver, just bad strength. Keep reading. Because after his date, I'm down to verse 8 now. After his date, he said he turns aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, a swarm of bees and honey are in the carcass of the lion. He takes some of it in his hand and goes along eating. That's where they get that phrase, meeting, I mean, um, eating on a run. Right here, verse 9. And when he comes to his father and mother, he gives some, of, some to them, and they also eat. But he does not tell them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. The least common denominator of Samson killing the lion and feeding his family is that he never tells them what they do what he did, but it's more to that. In touching the carcass of the lion, he has violated the vow of the Nazarite law. Because according to Numbers chapter 6 verse 6, by touching the carcass of the lion, he is now considered unclean. Well, Pastor, what are you saying? Beloved God, lean forward to you. There are people we know that are like Samson's parents. Haters. Amen, somebody. Amen. And because they are haters, they try to, to push their own opinions onto what they think is best for us. Amen. Can I put a pin in there and say, we ain't asked for none of their opinions? Amen. They just volunteered their opinion. Amen. Samson told his mama and daddy who he wanted for his wife. He didn't say how you like her, what she look like, do she think she's going to make it. He didn't ask for nothing. He said, I see what I want, go get her. And he, they take it upon themselves to push upon him. You, you can't find nobody in our family. You can't find nobody in, in you can't find nobody in, 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 in all of Prince George County. You can't find nobody in D.C. You had to go to Virginia and find somebody, really. That's why it's important that we have a personal relationship with God so that God can direct our path. You don't believe me? Proverbs 3 and 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Amen? The second thing that this teaches us is that we have to oftentimes do what we have to do do and watch this. This is difficult for some of us. Keep our mouth shut. Yes. 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 Even after we do what we have been called to do because people will try to interrupt what God has for us to do. And we are too part of the problem. Some of all of us are not like Samson. Yes. We're opposite of Samson and we can't hold water. No matter how much somebody say, this is between me and you. By the time I get to my truck, 
he, 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 here's the second part of the problem. And I do counseling on Tuesdays. Some of all of us are still seeking acceptance and approval from somebody or somebody outside of us. So even when we accomplish something, we want to tell somebody, look what I did. Yes. Don't believe me? Watch. The Pharisees and the Sadducees are those that prayed and fast and they did everything out in public. They went out and told everybody what they did. But Jesus, somebody say but Jesus. Jesus healed and delivered people and did it discreetly and moved on about his business. Why? Because he's a classic man. And what he taught us is that it's in now you've done that outward stuff. Don't mean nothing. But it's in your inside. It's the conviction and the conversion inward that compels us to carry out what we've been called to do. Why? Because when you are a classic man, uh, you do things uh, without no recognition, uh, no approval, uh, no acceptance. Uh, you accept yourself. Uh, you accept what God says. Uh, and once you accept uh, what God says uh, and his approval, uh, you look at him and say, uh, well done, uh, that good and faithful servant. Uh, you've been faithful uh, over a few things. Uh, I place you in charge of many. Uh, you are a classic man. Somebody say that. afraid of it. Can't be afraid to use the spirit of the Lord. You can't brag about it. But the fourth and final thing is don't be ashamed to bless others. Uh, yeah, Pastor, I may need to come see you on Tuesday. Don't be ashamed to bless others. Let's recap. In chapter 13, verse 5, Sam says, Mama, Mind you, Samson's mother's name is never given. Amen? That's how disrespectful they were in biblical times. Samson's mama is told what her son is going to do. Verse 24 of chapter 13. Samson is born and grows up. Chapter 13, chapter 13 verse 25. The Spirit of the Lord begins to move upon Samson. Chapter 14, verse 1. Samson sees the apple of his eye in a Philistine woman and uses his attraction as a part of his strategy in delivering the children of Israel. In verse 6, his parents shows hateration towards he, who he desires to make his wife. Now it is in Samson's action after his date, verses 7 and 8, that he proves that he's a classic man. Why? He does what we are expected to do by God. Watch this. The fifth commandment has a blessing attached to it because it says, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord that God gives you. But in our text, Samson's parents throw shade. Amen. Older people, that's, that's, a, new, that's a new word of, of hateration. Amen. When somebody say you throwing shade, that means you did something you ain't had no business doing. Amen? They throw shade towards the lady that he wants to be his wife. As a matter of fact, in their eyes, she's beneath them. She's not good enough for their little Samson. And if the truth be told, confess, some of all of us can relate to Samson and his girl because someone has tried to pick somebody for us and or we were good enough for somebody's family. Just look forward if you're guilty. So we're hated on because we didn't live up to their standards. Well, Pastor, what's your point? Beloved of God, lean forward. Let me tell you this to your eyeballs. Uh, regardless how much hate we face, how much shade is thrown, unfortunately but fortunately, we still have to be a blessing to others. Amen? Watch this. The text says after Simon's date, uh, he takes some of the sweet and sour lion. You know, they was in a black community. Amen? It was a Chinese joint somewhere around the corner. Sweet and sour lemon lion in his hand and he went along eating. When he came to his father and mother, he gave some to them and they also ate. Therefore, the lessons to learn from them, from this is, one, we still got to bless those that persecute and use us. And can I put a pin right there and say that's not an easy thing? 
I got to bless somebody that stole my last one of those. I got to bless somebody that slept with my man, slept with my woman. I got to bless somebody that keyed up my car. And I know that's the person that did it. Whoa, God, I ain't feeling this. <laughs> Number two, we can't always tell people where their blessings came from. Amen. Number three, this talks about the haters. If people are in need, they really won't care where their blessings come from. Amen. Amen. <coughs> His mama and daddy had to have been hungry because where you been, where you got lion meat with honey on it, but where, what takeout did you go to in between where you were and here that you brought us something to eat? They were evidently hungry because they didn't even care where the meat came from. Amen. And so, but the best news of the good news lies in the fact that regardless who we bless and no matter how big or small the blessing is, in spite of us, God still blesses us. Why? Because when we do what God has called us to do and we prove to God that we are a classic man, a classic woman, a classic boy, and a classic girl, God will look beyond all our faults and failures, uh, all our sins and shortcomings, uh, and he will continue to bless us and bless us uh, and bless us. Uh. That's why the song says, uh, the Lord uh, is blessing me uh, right now, uh, right now. Uh, he woke me up this morning uh, and started me on my way. Uh, the Lord uh, is blessing me uh, now, uh, not because we're so good, uh, not because we're so faithful, but because of something uh, that we did uh, that we don't even remember. Uh, keep blessing those, uh, they'll be ashamed uh, to bless others. Uh, don't brag about uh, what you did. Uh, don't be afraid uh, of the Spirit. Uh, don't be afraid uh, to use the Spirit. Uh, but when the Spirit uh, comes upon you, uh, just say, uh, Lord, here I am.
God will take all of those little games so far away from us that the people we used to roll with won't even recognize us. And Paul says, any man, any woman, any boy or girl who is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. For the old has passed. Behold, new things come. And so we got to be serious about this thing. And know that the enemy is, is trying every day to destroy us. And so if you want to be a classic man, classic woman, classic boy or girl, take your relationship with God serious. Don't play with this thing. Because the enemy is looking who he can swift like wheat. And he's going to step in and take advantage of every time we play with this thing called being saved. Being in the ark of safety. And so if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, I invite you to come. Maybe you're looking for a church home. I invite you to come. It's a bunch of classic men and women here. Classic boys and girls in here. But we're doing it based on what the word of God says. If God gave me dominion, I don't want nothing but dominion. Over anything that tries to take over my life. I want dominion over that. Strong's wind may blow. <laughs> some of us have had some strong winds. Come on, somebody. But I tell the world.